Hi everyone, this is Zunker Chapter 7, The Impact of New Technology on Work, Career Development, and Learning Platforms. So what this chapter is about is about technology and the good and the bad that comes along with this powerful tool. Virtual reality, also known as VR, is a computer simulated 3D environment that can be viewed on a computer screen, tablet, and or smartphone. Uh, when sound and images are added to a computer simulated 3D environment, it is augmented reality. Um, augmented reality would be a little bit of real uh, with your computer design stuff. So think about when you play Pokemon Go, um, there's an option for AR. So if you turn it on, you'll see the background is the reality, the real world, but then you'll see Pokemons running around or flying around. So that's the augmented component of it. So there's a mixture of whether or not it is completely fake, but it looks real, or partly fake and partly real at the same time. So it's a little bit of both, okay? The downside of technology, uh, in 1,000 corporations that were surveyed, 66% collected personal data on their employees. Um, civic, political, and religious organizations may prejudice a supervisor's evaluation of an employee. So let's talk a little bit about social media right now in that sense, right? So if you have a personal social media and it has pictures of you uh, doing specific things, they have probably collected it before they met you. And they probably are collecting things afterwards too. Um, there are loopholes. It's actually considered inappropriate and unethical to do this. However, uh, when surveys are being said or sent out, 66% said that they're actually collecting your data. So that means that they'll know things that you do for fun on your personal time, such as, you know, getting lit, which is not necessarily a good thing um, if you don't want that persona to be known. And we can talk a little bit more about professionalism as we talk about resume building later on. Um, but we, I mean, I have some tips that I can also offer you as a professional as well. Um, so civic, political, and religious organizations may prejudice a supervisor's evaluation of an employee. So that is something also, like if you are openly talking about your spirituality, that could also bias someone who's interviewing you. And that could actually prevent you from actually getting a promotion or getting hired um, and st so forth and so on. Video technology is used to observe and evaluate job performance, sometimes without the employee's knowledge of when it takes place. Um, and that's unfortunately very sneaky. Um, there are some computer programs that actually monitor you. So um, I've heard this happening in some places of work. Let's say that they have like some sort of instant messenger uh, app on their computer. So if you don't touch your computer keyboard within 15 minutes, it reports you or it says, you know what, you're not working on your computer, what's wrong? Why are you not touching it? Um, and that means that it's it's actually watching you and monitoring you. There's other ways that people do it as well. Doesn't necessarily mean like a camera in front of your face or anything like that. Um, and we can talk about how that can actually make people feel very stressed out uh, and micromanaged, and that's not necessarily a good thing, a motivator for uh, uh, basically being productive. Counselors are now faced with an overwhelming amount of career information that must be organized to be useful. So that means that a counselor who is working in this field needs to dedicate some time or commit some time to actually uh, going through all the information so that they know what is important to uh, share with their clients and what is not necessarily that important. So you have to be able to keep information up to date on computers and that would be a plus. Expectations, up to date projections about the workplace, though these are some of the things that uh, people expect you to know. Uh, labor market projections and then also job, uh, current job descriptions, which is really the foundation of working in this field, right? Being able to understand and talk about specific types of jobs. Even if you don't know, you know how to research it so that you can start talking to people about it. Technology is also a powerful tool for innovative learning delivery systems. Um, so that's the learning skill that you need to also develop as well. Okay, Computer Assisted Career Guidance, or CACG, in online systems. So we'll talk a little bit about the actual uh, programs. Should still meet the standards used to ele uh, evaluate traditional psychometric measures, like, such as validity and reliability. So they need to be aware of those things as well uh, when they're implemented into the computer for use. Fear from some counselors is that computerized systems will become the sole source of career guidance programming. So. Remember, the computer 
doesn't act like a human. It doesn't read necessarily body language and all that other stuff. So um, people will say, well, you know, sometimes the message that the client is trying to give you is all visual and maybe in the tone of the way that they talk. So if a computer is going to take over, will it potentially miss a lot of things about uh, the person? Okay, so um, people are right now saying that it should be seen as a supplement, but not a replace uh, place person. Uh, basically, it does not replace a counselor. Computers allow for independent and individualized courses of action, but do not have the counselor's responsibility for direction and structure. And that's something that's really important is that the human touch to it, where they can sort of direct the person in the right way because of the way that they've now understood that person um, is really, really important. User anxiety, inadequately prepared users can easily become discouraged when computer, oh, with computerized systems. And that's very true. Sometimes I'm reading through something, I'm like, oh my goodness, this thing is so confusing or whatever, right? And that can discourage a person from using it. So if they're not gonna use it, then they're not gonna necessarily get the help that they're looking for. But when it comes to a person, when they're working with another person, the person can read whether or not they are frustrated and then go, hey, how can I help you? Is there something going on? You know, and stuff like that. And then that would be an encourager for a person to then start to explore the proper places to work. Advantage of online and CACG systems. Interactive capability of computerized systems allow users to become more actively involved in the career guidance process. Um, user motivation is sustained through the unique use of immediate feedback. Uh, basically, when you take an assessment of anything or any sort, um, you'll get the scores immediately when it's done on a computer. The opportunity to individualize the career exploration process provides opportunities to personalize career search strategies. Okay, so again, that is also because they know your scores, they can suggest certain things specifically with your specific scores, it becomes very individualized that way. Computer guidance or computer based guidance systems provide systematic career exploration and career development programs that are accessible at any time. So you as a person can do this at midnight at one o'clock in the morning because you're not expecting a person to be there with you, right? Usually when you do career development type stuff, it probably is between eight and maybe six o'clock uh, during the day on Monday through Friday, let's say, right? So this becomes uh, at any time you can access this information. And then access a large database uh, of up-to-date information for local, state, national, and international locations immediately available. Again, you can go online. People have posted all these jobs, and so it's so accessible. And again, you can do it at any time of the day, and you will still have the information there at the tip of your fingers. The following components are found in most systems. So these are some of the things that you can find when it comes to online programs. Occupational information, armed service information, Information about post-secondary institutions of higher learning, so such as colleges. If you're looking to do research on colleges, you can find it all online. Information on technical and specialized schools, financial aid information, interest inventories, and decision-making skills. Additionally, some also include local job information files, ability measures, value inventories, methods of predicting academic success in college, job search strategies, resume prep information, information on job interviews, and then of course components for adults. So, you know, again, all these things could be potentially available if you do know how to do the research to find them online. Systems of Interactive Guidance and Information, or SIGI and SIGI Plus. In SIGI, basically there are subsystems that talk about values, locate, compare, and plan, and then strategize. Okay, and SIGI Plus is an introduction, self-assessment, search, information, skills, preparing, coping, deciding, and next steps. So those things help you uh, or that person basically looking uh, for guidance in all these different components if you are willing to pay for the additional services. These are also um, some additional things that you can also use or some additional websites um, that will also help you with all this information that we just talked about. So there's the XAP, the Career Information Delivery System, Career Finder Plus, Career Leader, the Career Key, Career Scope, 
Career Vision Plus, Career Ways, and then Bark.com. So some of the stuff is something that you do have to pay. So maybe if you work in an organization or you attend a school, they would have already purchased it and then they will be able to help you access this information. Steps in assisting users of CACG and online systems. Um, number one is assessment of needs. The, the number two is orientation of it. Three is individualized programs. Four is counselor intervention. Five is online assistance. And then six is follow-up. So these are the steps uh, when you use computerized stuff to help you find work, uh, but also, or interests or whatever, but then also have a counselor there as well with you uh, to come in and help you at the steps where uh, you might have questions that the computer might not be able to answer. Using the internet, uh, Harris uh, Bowlesby, Cycle and Samson in 2002 says that they developed a guide for using the internet in career planning. So these are the areas that they are focusing on. Education and training opportunities, financial aid, internship opportunities, job openings, career information, education and training information, military information, career counseling programs, exploring occupations, educational institutions, scholarships, financial aid opportunities, and job openings. So they are hoping that the professional that works in this field should know a little bit about all of these things, okay? Or know a lot about all these things and how to get the information if they don't know the answers. Um, examples of web locations that people in this field should know is America's Job Bank and also ONET, which replaces the DOT or also known as the Dictionary of Occupational Titles, and then also the Occupational Outlook Handbook. So these are all links that have been hyperlinked for you to explore on your own if you want to. Um, we will go through this as we go through the resume uh, component of your project in class. So um, just go through and just look at it really quickly um, and just get a gist of what this whole uh, these websites uh, offer. And then we can talk a little bit more about this later. There's also gopher sites to help assist job hunters. And gopher sites are basically sites that kind of have a list, basically. And then you can go through these lists. So that we're talking about places that you probably are familiar with, such as career.com, careerbuilder.com, careermag.com, careermosaic.com, dice.com, jobs.com, monster.com, and nationjob.com. Using CACG and online assessment results. So responsible use of test interpretation services from computer generated testing known as computerized based interpretations or CBIs. Remember, just because a test or an assessment is put online doesn't mean that you don't need to pay attention to the validity and reliability. It's still important when you bring it over to a computer. And then of course, you wanna have the multicultural competency uh, considerations, again, because your client could be a person of color. And so um, those things need to also be uh, considered when it comes like, uh, when this information is now provided online. Organization career information. Uh, one way to arrange non-interactive career information material is by use of the Holland Oates letter, code letters, RIASEC. Remember what RIASEC stood for, uh, realistic, investigative, artistic, um, and so forth and so on. Color coded to help make information easy to find. So some websites will actually color code these things for you so that you're able to understand what they mean or kind of see a pattern. Um, there's also the Career Information Processing CIP model, provides the counselor with an organized set of materials to address readiness for career choice, decidedness, motivation, verbal aptitude, and also uh, decision-making style and balance of presentation. So again, um, this is a model when it comes to an online that will provide these things for you. Methods of training and organization. So there are ways to train people. There's a classroom setting, there's distance learning, and then on the job learning. So let's maybe explore a little bit of each of these. So classroom settings, when you're in a classroom, you're gonna pay attention to the lectures. You might do role playing. You might read about case studies and then discuss them. Uh, behavior modeling, which basically means that you're gonna watch someone else do something and then you're gonna repeat it yourself. Strain by simulation. Uh, trainees practice learned skills that they observe of actual job conditions and activities. They can watch videos and DVDs. And then they can also use virtual reality technology. So they might go into this virtual world and then do certain job things to see if they like it or not. So this is in the classroom setting. Let's look at that. Uh, distance learning. 
Um, that's printed materials, DVDs, videos, web-based programs, webinars, webcasts, blogs, wikis, and listservs. So let's define a couple of these things that you might not necessarily know. Well, printed materials, that's just, you know, stuff that you can read, DVDs, videos, web-based programs. So that means that, you know, a program that's designed to teach them something. Webinars are basically a lecture that's online. It could be recorded or it could be live. Webcast is very similar to that. Blog is just reading through, you know, uh, someone's writing about a specific job. A wiki is information uh, that you can get, and that is provided by other people who, let's say, work in the field or something like that. And then a listserv is basically just being on an email list where people will send you information and then you get the information from those emails. On the job training is job rotation. So you might move from one part of the process of making something to another part uh, and you rotate until you uh, know everything. There's also apprentice training. Apprentice training is basically kind of like an internship where you're going to help a person who has a skill set already and you're going to learn from that person. There's also coaching, which basically means that there's someone there to kind of motivate you and mentor you. And then there's just mentoring itself. OK, trainee is given the opportunity to observe work tasks, do the tasks and then receive the feedback from doing those tasks. And that's on the job training. They'll get paid to do these things as well. Um, and this is through mentorship like we talked about before or coaching. Intelligent tutoring systems for ITS. Currently, it is very expensive to build, but in the future, who knows? It could be very cheap, right? Um, Computer-based learning programs that is highly individualized and is considered to be an improved tech version of program instruction. So this one really does pay attention to the person and the unique mistakes that they make. Okay, uh, diagnose a user's level of understanding, performance, and types of errors made in performing a task. Then data is collected from each user and the system provides guidelines for more appropriate procedures and learning activities. So for example, um, 50 people take this and then they all miss one specific area of the training. So the computer will know that everyone for some reason is not working on that area and then they'll uh, uh, adjust it. Uh, people might reprogram it so that they can pay attention to these components a little bit more because a lot of people seem to be struggling. So an example, a real life example would be NASA. Um, they employed ITS to train flight dynamic officers how to deploy satellites in space. So if you think about this, you can't really just deploy uh, satellites for fun or for practice, right? So there's a virtual version that's computerized so that it acts as though it's a real thing. So when a person is uh, training for this, right, and then they accidentally miss or something like that, it, it doesn't destroy like a multi-million dollar satellite. Right. It uses errors as examples to force the trainees to fix the common errors that are repeated over and over again that it has recognized. Cognitive tutor aids students in solving problems in algebra, geometry, computer programming, and languages. Intelligent essay assessor grades essays in science, history, and other subjects. There's also the auto tutor, help college students with computer literacy, physics, critical thinking skills through conversation. Virtual reality training or VR training, high tech version of work simulated in uh, 3D worlds. So Goldstein and Ford in 2002 said that military uses a lot of VR for training, uh, training air crews and how to use emergency parachutes by simulating different conditions that they might encounter. So it might make it very windy or it's storming and stuff like that, which is not necessarily something that you can just go, hey, I'm going to test you in this and see how you do because the person can get hurt. So the virtual training, if they do get hurt, it's just a virtual person dying, right? It's not you dying, which is really important. And so this training is really, really helpful. VR creates different weather conditions, hostile locations, day and nighttime environments, and different wind conditions so that this person can be prepared in all types of circumstances. Penn State Medical School says that it's a delicate microsurgical procedure of joining two blood vessels, all through virtual reality. So they're going to learn how to do all the surgery uh, before they actually operate on someone because this stuff is very delicate or things that could kill someone very easily. So instead, you want to practice virtually first so you know what's going on and then you can actually start doing it in the real world. 